Well, just a little recap on, on the reference that you're making. Um, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics has looked at projections for the next 10 years of where employment will be. And they track certain kinds of jobs, not all of the jobs that we might imagine for design, but a number of them. And the traditional practices in industrial design, architecture, uh, print-based graphic design, publishing, the kinds of things that we normally associate with the design education are growing well below the national average for all employment. Now, some of this has been upset by the pandemic, but um, generally speaking, the trends are not high for these traditional jobs. And yet there are um, no, a number of schools, I would say in graphic design in the United States, there's 2,500 schools that teach that subject at some level. And the overwhelming majority of them are built on curricula based on these traditional practices. So if you look at graphic design alone, there would be 14,000 new positions over the next 10 years 2,500 schools preparing for that job market. If you look in networked communication, web, and software development, 325,000 new jobs. So the traditional practices in communication design are only 4% of the new growth. So we have to start looking at what does that mean for the education that we produce for students. And Traditionally, I think what schools have done is add courses to a curriculum built on an old model. And so you have uh, at the upper levels of courses in UX and I IX, and you have uh, issues related to business that might be added in terms of uh, expanding the general education coursework required of a student. But you don't have reconsideration of those fundamental premises on which that that traditional education was built so i'm i'm offering a, a a kind of diagrammatic model that hugh Duberly, who was uh, the original creative director at apple computer and vp at netscape aol uh, now a software and service designer has uh, modeled and he talks about three levels of practice um, first you have the traditional artifact driven practice these are people designing messages, spaces, and objects. We move to an interaction design model where all of a sudden we're, we're interested in kind of storytelling, um, exchanges uh, in technology with people. And then he has something called design for conversation, which he describes as systems, services, platforms, communities. What, th what this represents is a shift in the scale of problems, that problems are more complex. They're, they're requiring interdisciplinary engagement. So understanding of issues beyond the studio kinds of practices that we normally see as the core of a design education. And those, those complexities are uncertain. They require problem framing, not just problem solving. And they, they really deal with the kind of subjective decision making about what you're going to privilege over other things, which means that co-creation co and participation of audiences in trying to determine what the problem really is matters. And so I think that is not about just adding a tech course to the, uh, to the problem uh, range of what students take on. It's beginning to think about what are the methods and what are the scale of problems and the degree of responsibility students have for framing them uh, that we need to infuse into the design education process. Um, another model I, I use uh, was developed by an architect who's now an information architect, Jorge Arango, and it's a PACE diagram and it talks about our, our traditional work as designers has been in form and structure issues that deal with how people actually confront design. But more and more we're into the purpose and values driven uh, and kind of governance issues of, of design. And we have to learn something about that. We have to understand what it means to actually shift a business model or to get to the heart of a community group that's trying to make some sort of change or understand the long-term consequences of a sustainability uh, issue. 
And so how students learn that is going to be through other fields, through engagement in this kind of problem definition. I'll give you a really tactile kind of example. Um, uh, we decided that we would flip the curriculum here at NC State from simple to complex, from, to, to complex to simple. In other words, if you start with complex problems, can you extract principles from those complex problems rather than this idea that you defer complexity until the upper levels of the curriculum? And in doing that, we asked ourselves, you know, what's the role of drawing? Well, drawing might be helpful as a way of prototyping something. But mapping and sketching um, relationships is also really important. So drawing classes now include concept mapping of understanding how to model complex problems and begin to see the territory uh, and then deciding what territory to work in within that larger context. So even in those traditional uh, practices, it's, it's, they change their roles. Um, you know, we're no longer worried about figure drawing um, or, you know, is the shadow right on the side of this object? But we're really worried about what that means in terms of prototyping and showing somebody how something might work. Um, photography, we don't teach as fine arts photography anymore. We teach it as kind of documentation of understanding how some, a space is used and people and settings. So I think those, those aspects of traditional education can also be recast uh, to reflect this kind of larger purpose. Um, let's see if I have my notes. Um, yeah, and you know, I, I'm working on a book right now that really uh, takes a look at the kind of legacy of modernist education and i think this is something we have to ask questions about um, the the principles that we use to teach uh, design have largely come from mid 20th century mass production <laughs> you know very artifact driven very uh top down very uh uh kind of repeat the process for every object you know you start over again you go back and go through approval processes and a whole range of kind of organizational decisions and the goal is to get something almost perfect but we don't live in that kind of world now we live in good enough for now because there will always be another version so some of the things that i think we have to start questioning are this idea of a single rationalist um, reality. We know that people are different, that place-based uh, issues, local issues are as important as kind of some global universal understanding of who people are. Um, problem solving versus problem seeking. You know, we're really needing to frame those problems uh, in different ways and understand the consequences of framing them. Uh, the simple to complex curricular structures, you know, that's directly from the Bauhaus. You do a foundation year, simple, simple principles, defer issues of context and audience, and then you move into upper level study that's highly specialized. Um, courses defined by medium or artifact. You know, um, if you have a web class, you make web things. You don't ask whether, you know, the web is the right answer to the problem you know, it's assumed you're going to make a website in a web class. Um, uh, the kinds of issues of types of practice and the artifacts that are made in that, you know, you run out of space. There's too much going on now. You can't make a course for everything that designers do anymore. So um, we have to question that. This idea that you isolate concepts one at a time for instruction and you, you take out anything that's going to make a messy solution to the problem or a messy problem uh, that's that's very much a, a kind of Bauhaus idea um, the relationship with the people we design for um, has changed we're now designing with them we're designing tools and systems people are making their own experiences so that relationship is no longer asymmetrical it's symmetrical you know we're we're now in a kind of shared relationship with people 
um, standards of student performance, you know, when it comes down to it, essentially what we have historically valued is execution, appearance, and craft. And those are not the variables now that count so much, um, especially when we're making tools and systems through which people make their own stuff. And then this idea of other fields, I don't know what it's like in Turkey, but the United States has something called general education. So roughly a third of a student's curriculum could be in courses other than design. But those courses are proximate, they're not integrated with design. So design faculty don't have much idea of what's going on in those classes and don't make very good use of it, despite the fact that most of what is going on in practice is highly interdisciplinary and involves applications from across the fields. So those are all the legacy of this kind of 20th century educational model that I think we have to go back and interrogate. Um, and when you talk with people, they'll, they'll say, oh, we've left the Bauhaus behind. Well, what they mean is they've left, you know, value scales and circle square triangle exercises behind. But this, this tradition is very much a constructed one, but it's seen as natural because it's so pervasive across all of the design education that has been kind of westernized um, through that model. So I think there's a lot of work to be done there. And that's part of what uh, this future of design education effort with Donald Norman is about, trying to examine those principles and see if they are still relevant, what is relevant, what should we hold on to, and what do we need to let go.